Welcome to Small Biz TV. My name's Neil Butler. And on Small Biz TV, what we do is we talk to a small business operator and we find out some stuff about their business and also what brought them to the point they're at. Now, today is a bit unusual because we have got two people joining me on Small Biz TV. It'd be great to introduce Roy Emmett and Zoe Wood. Hi, team. Hi. G'day, Neil. Hey, team. Bit of waving going on. So this is an interesting one. Humanizing Money Matters is the name of the business, but Zoe, you're also from Video Confidence Coach. So let's talk, Roy, first a little bit about Humanizing Money Matters. Yeah, Neil, let's, look, it came out of a concept, uh, gosh, it must be about three years ago now. Zoe and I had a conversation. Um, it initially started, I've got another business that I do a little bit of bookkeeping in and Zoe came to me uh, quite frustrated with the lack of support that she'd had for uh, previous bookkeepers to be in her business as a, a financial uh, business partner. And that sort of sparked an idea. And and through Zoe and her, her ability to tap into her generational uh, business people, um, there's a gap in the market to help 18 to 35-year-old young entrepreneurs manage their uh, bookkeeping and compliance and tax affairs effectively. Like there's just no one in the space. So uh, pretty much over the last three years, Zoe and I have been uh, plotting a course of um, how best to market, how best to target, how to get to market. And, and we're probably almost at the finish line in the next couple of months to have the fully fledged product going, but it's really to target, um, and Zoe's a perfect example, a young person who started out in business, has a bad experience or has no experience at all and needs a partner, a peer, rather than a parental type teacher relationship being told. They need collaboration, support and direction on how to get things done in the world of compliance and paying taxes To one, once your business becomes profitable. And we will just divert slightly from humanizing money matters for a moment. Zoe, tell us a little bit about Video uh, Confidence Coach. It probably says something in the name of the business about what you do. But tell us a little Wait, bit about you're what you're going to tell it like it is, Neil. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So uh, Video Confidence Coach works with individuals and corporations on teaching people how to be confident in front of the camera. So as you and I can attest to right now, and we can all attest to right now, everything's going to be virtual. Everyone seems to be you know, on screens at the moment. Um, and having that confidence in front of camera is crucial to be able to communicate, to get any work done. And for a lot of people, that confidence and that experience is just something that you've never had to use. You just had to, you know, rock in with people. You just had to smooge up with people face to face and you can just do everything. But when you have a screen between you and your potential client, it things get difficult. So... That's what I'm here for. Excellent. So let's uh, let's ask some of the questions that we normally ask people who are on this. We're just going to get two answers to every question. Roy, what was your first full-time job? Uh, Storman. Okay. So, yeah, back in the early 80s. Wow. Okay. And Zoe, what was yours? Small business owner. <laughs> oh, Start when so I was 14. Had, as someone would say, never had a real job then. Okay. That's good. No, I never had a real job. <laughs> And um, we should mention at this point of time too, we, we haven't said so far, that uh, the, the business that we're talking about, Humanising Money Matters, is based in Geelong in Victoria. Right. Um, although I suspect, given that we're here we are looking at us on TV, um, that we can do a lot of this stuff virtually as well. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. both. let's ask the question of both of you. Roy, firstly, what was the spark that made you go, ah, I want to start my own business. Was there a spark or something like that as distinct from yeah, doing the same job for somebody else? Uh, it really became um, uh, just an opportunity presented itself. Uh, I was actually uh, retrenched when I was 38 and had to go back to TAFE uh, because basically my work skills had become obsolete. And I was studying to get back into operations management in the logistics area and then uh, as we all know, Mr. Howard got the GST through Parliament and um, my brother, who's a tax agent, said, look, I'm just going to be flooded with work. Uh, can you flick into accounting and come and help me? And I worked uh, full time with him for about 18 months. And then uh, he had a number of oh, maybe half a dozen clients that needed bookkeeping services. 
So he said, well, you know, I really don't have enough work to keep you going now that we're over the, the hump. I don't have enough work to keep you going. Why don't you go out and develop your own business? So I had a probably 25, 30 grand worth of income pretty much straight away, which was really helpful. Mm. And um, then I found I was actually quite good at it and word of mouth and, you know, over the next 10 years of um, 15 years have built up quite a good business in Melbourne and then March 2015, Geelong, here I came. <laughs> uh, a good time to land because that was the time I uh, re arrived in town as yeah. well. And I think one of the, the really interesting things you mentioned there is, and, and people would be watching this going, oh, yeah, lucky for him, that ability to, to hit the ground running with the, the some degree of certain income must have made it so much easier for you to do. Yeah, that, absolutely right, because it's given me the opportunity to really work. Where I had the advantage, Neil, was um, I had a lot of work, word of mouth and I was a specialist in the financial services area. And... Um, so I pretty much just, my skills became transportable across a number of realms and having the mixture of uh, finance, uh, a venture capitalist, uh, uh, the, the tax work with my brother really built a solid base to understand what was going on. But now as I've, as I've reached a, a more uh, gentleman's age, I've, I'm a little bit more financially cashed up. So Zoe and I have had the opportunity to really explore starting actually starting this business from scratch mm. and part of that we've looked at with the name was people are so terrified of financial matters that's why we had uh came up with humanizing money matters in a sense uh saying humanizing money matters meaning everyday stuff but also to the double play that money you know he, that actually humanizing money matters matters so that you're not it does terrified. matter yeah yeah, so I'm, I've sort of done it reverse. I've built up a successful business and now I'm deciding that uh, there's a gap here in Geelong because the bookkeeping market in Geelong is very crowded and that's why Zoe and I have seen an opportunity to develop something at the, um, the junior end of the business scale to try and develop that. And Zoe, you, you mentioned, you just threw into the conversation idly there, I've been running a small business since I was 14. Um what was the spark that made you start your first small business? A little bit of boredom, really. Mm -hmm. Like I know that's probably not the answer that you want, Neil. But no, um, that's fine. No, <laughs> everyone's little... got a different reason, it, it, and that's the fascinating part of the, these conversations. Yeah. So um, essentially, for me, it was um, boredom. It was uh, working from school um, before and after school. I had about three hours either side because of where I lived, um, and the only internet access I had was at school. So um, I was really interested in videography, of graphic design, of all these um, aspects that are, you know, useful and quite common in the digital age that we live in, supposedly. Um, and I was already doing all of those at high school using the school computers so then from there I went to small businesses who needed my um, help and gave my services and that's how I started. Can't help thinking Roy that she had a crack then when she said about the digital age and then looked at each of us and went look at those two guys. Um, <laughs> hey <laughs> don't put words in my mouth Neil. Neil we're, we're, we're adapting. Neil. We're adapting, you know, adapting that's what we're doing. Um, Zoe's, Zoe has been the um, morphosis metamorphosis of my evolution into the digital world, kicking, screaming, yelling, and at times, hands on hips, Roy, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of Nike action, well done. <laughs> well, one, of the, one of the things we like to do on Small Biz TV is, is to give people who are watching some ideas for themselves, not just about promoting your business. And and we've got uh, some questions that we'll, we'll run with you first, Roy. If someone yep. came up to you and said, I know who you are, I'm thinking of starting my own business, What's the one nugget of advice you'd give me? Oh, go and find a mentor. Absolutely go and find a mentor that's uh, done a, a, a good job of running their own business. Um, the invaluable relationship building skills through a mentor and trusting someone enough to take on board the advice they've got to say, you, you really need that guidance through uh, marketing, building your brand. I've learned so much from Zoe in doing this, then I just realised how lucky I was in, in Melbourne, not having to go through branding, marketing, struggling to get business uh, market recognition. Um, so, and if I had have had a mentor uh, back then, it would have probably not had the same impact, but 
uh, you know, and, I, and just because I'm 62 and Zoe's a lot younger than me, Zoe has been a brilliant mentor to me in the world of social media because I knew nothing. Yeah. And, and I think that's a really interesting observation you make because mentor generally involves someone who's one generation older than you. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't. Sorry, that's not the wrong thing to say. The perception is that yeah. you, your mentor needs to be one generation older. But, you know, as you say, Zoe's providing mentorship to you. And that that's, I think, breaking that cycle. Zoe, what's the one piece of advice that you give somebody if they came and asked you? Make sure you know who you're talking to. So in industry terms, that's called finding your niche, um, the, when people need to find their exact person they're talking to, but making sure that you have a clear idea of who exactly you're doing it for and why you're exactly doing it for, as opposed to, oh, I just aim for um, men over 60 who want to retire. Mm. That's who I aim for. Like that is not um, like defined enough and not helpful enough for people to actually uh, do any sort of marketing work, let alone figure out who you're actually talking to when it comes to actually putting together your business. Yeah, because I think it's a really a really good point as well because depending upon the work you're doing uh, depends on how many customers you actually need. So if you're selling Aston Martin cars, you might need to sell two a year. You don't need to go out and look for you know, a market of a million people. You really need a market of five people, two of whom might buy that car. Whereas if you're selling widgets that you're making one cent on, yeah, it's a different. So I think knowing who your market is is a really important piece of advice. So it's so good. Uh, Roy, here we go. I'm going yeah. to tell you some very exciting news, and that is, brackets, not really. You've won $25,000 in Biz Lotto overnight, and you must spend it by the end of next week. What are you spending on it? In your business, by the way. <laughs> not on, oh, I think I'll go and buy one of those Aston Martins. Uh, what are you spending <laughs> on in your business? You've got 25K to spend Look, next week. It's, it's a really fascinating uh, question, Neil, because if there was a second piece of advice I'd give a little nugget to a startup business is to be cashed up. I've seen too many businesses struggle without working capital. Um, it's, it's about, say for example, like if I was going to start again from a uh, accounting business from scratch, I'd be spending it on webinars, I'd be spending it on education, I'd be spending it on, a, on computers, I'd be getting trained in how to you know, say, for example, and we can all wish that if COVID didn't happen, I'd have to get training on uh, this type of uh, communication because particularly if I'm appealing to a wider audience mm. virtually across Australia, I need to have all that infrastructure. So it's about your tools. You've got to, yeah. if $25,000, whether you're a carpenter or an electrician, uh, you know, an architect or, or uh, take Zoe, for example, in the social media game, it's about having the right tools to do the job the, to the best of your ability. And that's the best way you could spend that $25,000. Well, in breaking news, there were two Division One winners apparently last night. And Zoe, you won 25K in Biz Lotto <laughs> as well. Brackets, not really. Um, someone's going to come back to me one day and go, you promised me 25 grand. Um, what would you spend your 25 grand on in your uh, video uh, confidence coach what business? So yes, I would spend about uh, a quarter, um, uh, not quarter, a third on that on education, as Roy suggested. Um, being able to educate yourself is one of the best things that you can do as a small business owner, and you're going to continue to keep doing that way beyond finishing any of your businesses or you know retiring. I use in yeah. big air quotes there because no one ever really retires, but yeah. once you get to that, even that stage, you're still learning and you're still growing. Um, the next third would definitely be on a personal assistant or just someone who can mm. just help. Um, <laughs> then that's a feeling that I'm sure a lot of small business owners have and they're actually quite easy to find, surprisingly, no, that is. Um, and the last third would definitely be um, being able to um, spend that money on um, helping clients. So when I say mean helping, I mean like actively um, using that uh, money, not in a marketing sense, but just in a, all right, we're going to help these people achieve X, Y, and Z. Um, mm. Here you all have like 200 bucks um, or whatever, whatever package they end up choosing and that's what the money would go towards would be them to, to with the yeah let me make that clearer in better english the money would go to them to then help yep. them succeed yep no excellent okay so the next question roy then is we've talked about about the advice you would provide given that your experience um what's the best piece of advice you were given in running a business 
it, it, this might sound a bit odd, uh, Neil, but I, probably the best piece of advice I got was actually in my previous life as a, a state warehouse manager. Mm -hmm. And the, the branch manager and the uh, state manager, who were two very, very dynamic people, had a very, very simple philosophy. The customer is king. Mm. And that helped me develop my, I just took a lot of my customer service driven attributes that I had from my warehousing career, which started with that, and uh, listen to your customer, just don't hear. I've yeah. said this to Zoe a number of times. If people, if people say to me, I hear what you're saying, I'm mm -hmm. saying under my breath, no, you're not. You're just tuning out and you're just letting it flow through to the keeper. Yeah. Um, that's one of my least liked terminologies is that one. But it's really, it's really about relationship building. Build the yeah. relationship, build the relationship, and then the rewards will come. So, Zoe, now your turn. Um, what's the best piece of advice someone's given you about running your small business? Provide everything with value. So when running a small business, if you're not providing value in what you do, be it a social media post or be it the products or services you provide, if you're not actively trying to provide value and achieving providing value to your customer, then you shouldn't really be in business. No, absolutely. I think there's a couple of words that you used, Roy, and a word that you've just used, Zoe, but I think there's a very similar word that people get confused. If we think about the two words you were talking about, Roy, that is listening and hearing. One's about yeah. information getting in and the other one's just acknowledging there's a noise. And, yeah. and I think there's a really clear point there. I think a lot of small businesses, and this is you know, my observation over the journey, is there's a confusion between the word cost and value. Um, oh, absolutely. That, you know, I've got to keep my cost down. No, 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 no. You've got to actually provide good value for your money. And that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean cheapest. And I think that's often a stumbling point that I've seen with a lot of small businesses along the way. I can give you a, a reasonably quick example on that, Neil, is when I perhaps um, meeting some resistance with a new client, potential new client to uh, uh, to consider not necessarily just me, but taking on a, a, an external service provider. And let's say, for example, there's a uh, an architect who charges at $150 an hour. His normal day would be $1,200. If he works flat out for eight hours, he's going to get $1,200. Yeah. Okay, if he then sits down and tries to do his books for six hours, well, there's an opportunity cost of $900 because he's working on the books and yeah. that's costing him $900 that he can't yeah. earn because he's working on his books. Yeah, And then there's a the potential of a bookkeeper coming in who's pretty slick and knows what to do. He can do that in four hours, charge, say, $60. So there's $240 cost, but it still enabled him to earn his $150 in that same time. So he's yeah. still $90 an hour in front. And yeah. a lot of people, when you start to put it in that context, they go, it's as uh, Zoe likes to go, aha. You know, okay. it's one of those... Um, mm, yes, that's interesting. I like that concept because when it's it, and that then you can say that's the value of having an external service provider that is is a cost to your business, but it's adding value because you can go off and still keep doing your own job. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and if and if cost and value was easily interchangeable, uh, let's take the car industry for example. We've already given them a pump up. Let's give it again. Aston Martin wouldn't ever sell a car. Um, yeah. you know, it's about providing something for the cost. I think that's a really important part of it. Well, yeah. it's time yeah. for us to focus our attention on one of us. And Roy, you win. It's time <laughs> for the fast facts. We'll come back to you in a moment, Zoe. Are you ready? I am. If you had an interstate visitor with you for the day here in Geelong, where would you take them? Oh, the waterfront. Best coffee in your local area? Uh, hey Porter in Highton. Best restaurant or pub in your local area? Uh, gosh, I haven't been out for so long. Neil, you've caught me out on that one. <laughs> um, no, it's fine. You can pass if you need to. No, I, I had a lovely meal at uh, the revamped St Lords a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, the, the food was absolutely delicious. Uh, your favourite holiday destination? Can I say my couch? <laughs> Absolutely. What's something you use in your business that you couldn't live without? Oh, mobile phone. 
yeah, could not, yeah, communication's everything now. Yeah, favourite podcast? Oh, Neil Butler, of course. <laughs> I wasn't fishing, but run with it. Um, best concert ever? Uh, 1977 Rock Arena at the Calder Raceway. Wow, that's, that's a blast from the past. Uh, favourite childhood TV show? Oh, how many? Um, Flintstones, Get Smart, Bewitched, uh, Let's Keep Going. <laughs> favourite current TV show? Uh, I, I like the cop shows, Neil. Um, uh, mm -hmm. The F, FBI one on a, on a Sunday night's not too bad. And, um, yeah, I just tend to like the, uh, the Law and Order series. It's not too, not too bad either. And your favourite sports team? The Mighty Bombers. Now, for those who are in playing along at home, that's the Essendon Football Club in the Australian Football League. We better just explain. I assume that's um, the one. Yes, that's right. I keep forgetting that we're uh, we're we're going global. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's time for me to press this button. And Zoe, it's your turn now. So, uh, if you had an interstate visitor with you for the day, where would you take them? I definitely take them out to the Otway Ranges, which is kind of outside of Geelong, but it's on the Great Ocean Road, so I can get them car sick on the way there. <laughs> best coffee in your local area? I don't drink coffee, but I'm told that Oh Honey is the best. Best restaurant or pub in your local area? Oh, the uh, Digger's Arms. Uh, Favourite holiday destination? When it's not the couch. Um, I don't know, I have to think about it, but probably down... Um, Warnerbull and uh, down that way. Yep. Something you use in your business that you couldn't live without? Uh, my computer that I spend so much money on, it's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> uh, but very good value if, if, if a high cost. Um, yes. Favourite podcast? Um, yours, of course, Neil. <laughs> but uh, also, um, uh, like but also, uh, but also video, ma video marketing mastery by um, Todd Hartley, an American. Uh, best concert ever? I've never been to one. So, um, wow. uh, yay, live music and public spaces and people. Yep. Woo. Uh, <laughs> favorite childhood TV show? Uh, um, probably Play School. Uh, favorite current TV show? Just finished um, uh, Gravity Falls, and which is your the cool cartoon. Okay, and Very. your favourite sports team? Favourite sports team would have to be the Geelong Cats because I live in Geelong and <laughs> I like cats. Uh, yes, another one of the AFL teams. Well, um, there we go. It's going to be fun when you guys uh, see one another on a day when the Cats are playing the Bombers. It's going to be uh, a bit of fun. <laughs> um, before we go, uh, Roy, we might throw this one to you. Um, yep. Take a minute to give us a, a bit of an elevator overview of um, Humanising Money Matters for the folk who are watching. Yeah. The really important part, uh, Neil, for me in that area is to uh, for for to develop a uh, an entrepreneurial relationship that's a partnership. That, as I said, that uh, to bring my knowledge in in uh, running small businesses and operationals and things to be aware of that you need to meet your needs at the end of the financial year for paying tax and reporting your business compliance, but also just to really give that rock solid support on experience so that if there's an, an issue for the young entrepreneur there's not too much i haven't experienced in 20 years of business so it's to just be that source of information um you know the one-stop shop where i can give you a referral to a tax agent or i can help you with your bookkeeping or i can put you up set you up on a soft uh, an accounting platform software i can help you get your business started so that you can focus on your business Fantastic. Okay, so uh, before we go, Roy, how can people find you? Do you have a website for the business? Yes, I do. It's called Humanising Money Matters, and I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, that's where Zoe is doing a marvellous collaboration with me to be my virtual assistant to keep all that up and running. So um, it's it's really important. I've, as I said, it's a really good example of value, Neil. Mm. I could easily do all this myself, but Zoe has really added that value. So, yeah, Humanising Money Matters, just a refresh, website, Instagram and, and Facebook, and I'll look forward to hearing from people soon. Yay. Well, thanks for joining us uh, today on, on Small Biz TV. Roy Emmett from Humanising Money Matters. 
Zoe Wood, who is also doing some work in collaboration with Roy, but also operates a business called Video Confidence Coach. Thanks for joining us on Small Biz TV. Terrific, Neil. Thank you for having Thanks us, Neil. See you later. Small Biz TV is a video and audio podcast series uh, where we talk to small businesses and we try and learn a little bit about their business, but also about running a small business generally.